Okay, we are live. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are. Hope you're doing okay. Andrew back again with another live stream. And we have today the Asus ZenBook 14X, the uh, one I have here today, of course. Now, this one particular is the Q410. Now, I purchased this over at Best Buy here in the United States. However, the link for some reason is now down. It's been down since this afternoon, and I'm not sure why it was in stock when I purchased it this morning. And again, I did buy this. So we're looking at some pretty interesting specs. I'll update the link as soon as I can. I also did put a link in the description below as well for the main page over at Asus's website, asus.com for this particular unit. And I think it's gonna be a pretty interesting one. We've got an Intel Core i5 on this model, but it is an H series processor, 45 watts, 13500H is the specific Core i5 we're dealing with. Again, it's also got something called the Asus Ice Cool technology, whatever that really means. And then of course, Intel Iris Xe graphics, so integrated solution here. Uh, 70 watt hour battery. The display is what I think is going to be the star of the show. We're looking at a 14.5 inch OLED display. And I believe it's a touch display with a refresh rate up to 120 Hertz. So that looks like it's a pretty promising laptop. How's everybody doing? Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. Let's get this spread out over YouTube. We have right now 37 of you watching and we only have eight likes. So uh, do me that favor. The other favor I'm ask, I would ask of you as well is we're about 45, 48, uh, something like that, uh, subscribers short of 140,000 subscribers. So if you're not already subscribed and you like this kind of content, why don't you hit the subscribe button and that will certainly get us over the edge. Again, we're just on the precipice of 140,000 subscribers. I still have to pinch myself. So that is a really nice milestone. So I'd like to get it. And again, once we hit 140, next up is going to be 150 and we're gonna go up from there hopefully. I'm also simultaneously live streaming on Twitter as well, of course, here, main channel on YouTube. So that is where we are. Let's say hello to a few people. We got Raphael here. Good to see you as well. Another live unboxing. That is correct. And again, we'll get that link sorted out once I guess Best Buy figures it out. It is down. Uh, maybe I bought the only one. I don't know. It's kind of strange, to be honest with you. Kind of strange. And thanks, Raphael, for pointing out the social media aspect of this. That certainly helps out the channel. Let me make this a little bit smaller, move this over. Um, so a great way to support the channel is hit that like button, as I mentioned, subscribing. And also, by the way, Super Chat, Super Sticker, all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. Memberships all certainly help. I did go out of pocket on this one. Now, interestingly enough, before we get this out of the box, I will let you know, I did speak to Asus a, a little while back and they did send, they did uh, tell me they will be sending me some stuff. So I will be getting review units, hopefully. I'm not sure exactly which ones that I can even talk about. This one seems to already be on sale, so I'm not worried about of an embargo or anything like that. All right, so let's see what we have here, 39 of you. Now, let's get an idea of the specs here. And here you can see it on your screen. Uh, one of the best parts of this, and we'll get right to the price. I paid $799.99 here at Best Buy in Las Vegas in Nevada. And what you're looking at is some really nice specs, and it went pretty quickly. I'll probably redo this, show you again. But uh, looking at 1.5 kilograms or 3.3 or so pounds, ink well gray is what they're calling it. And that is uh, pretty nice. Let's just look at it one more time. Again, uh, here you have the, and I could, I could pause this. You, we have the 14.5 inch display here, 550 nits according to their specs, OLED, HDR, 120 Hertz. And you're kidding me, this is 800 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. All right, 70 watt hour battery also. So good to see William here. And we ha also have, um, uh, Alex Z was a portable type of guy. So looking for anything comparable to the XPS 13, this should be a pretty interesting one. Let's make sure we have enough people here. We got 40 of you. Let's get right to it. Let me take off this uh, graphic here. Let me put it on here 
and let's set this up. All right, so without further ado, let's get this out of the box. Clean packaging so far. This is typical of Asus. Okay. And I always love this uh, unboxing experience with Asus in search of incredible. You can see here, uh, really nice, uh, nice, simple, but yet effective packaging, as you can see here. Now, this just lifts up, and I can show you here. This lifts up to greet you. So I like that unboxing experience. You can see it here. Let's put this to the side. This is the Inkwell Gray. That's what they're calling it. And then, of course, uh, let's go to this. Okay, we have some warranty information. We've got some uh, information regarding such as the user guide here and yada, yada, yada. So just typical stuff. And on this side... For some reason, and I, I think I saw somebody in the comments or in the review, somebody also picked one up. Why are they giving you a, uh, a European plug? I am not sure. I'm in the United States, so pretty interesting. This, you can see here, it's not a US plug. Not a big deal because I have, uh, we can charge this with USB-C. It's got two Thunderbolt 4 ports, so I'm not worried about that. Let's put that to the side and then Nothing over there. And then put that, let's get the charging brick here. So here's the charger and it's a 90 watt charger. So you can see it there and let's put this to the side. It's USB-C. So again, I don't know why they sent me a European plug. This looks European to me. So if you're in Europe, let me know. Does that look like the American plug? It certainly does not. So. Let's put this down. So that's pretty interesting packaging. So again, pretty nice, uh, pretty portable as far as the charger. Okay, let's, uh, let me get this uh, out of the plastic. Yeah, kind of strange European plug or the US here. So I'm not sure what what is going on, people. If I can get a grip on this somehow. It's nice, nice looking. Okay, so let's take a look at this Inkwell Gray. It's already showing some fingerprints. It says Asus Zenbook there. You can see it here. We can put it on this camera. And there you go. It's got a nice little pattern on here. It's not indented or anything. Oh, maybe it is a little bit, but it's a pretty interesting pattern. And again, they used to use that cylindrical pattern, but this time around, not so much. Um, pretty, pretty light, 1.5 kilograms, 14.5 inch diagonal display. 3.3 pounds. In fact, let's get out the scale. But before we do that, let's just see if we can open it with one finger. We can, so that's good. Very nice. We'll look at the keyboard in a minute, but let's uh, let's 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 get our own measurement in terms of the weight. So let me turn that on, and we just put it on like this so we can see it together. Put it down over here. So they're saying 1.5, and I'm looking at 1.586 kilograms on my scale, so pretty close. And then pounds-wise, 3.79. So uh, I guess my scale might be, uh, I, I don't know if it's as calibrated. They're saying 1.5 and 3.3. So close, I guess, somewhat. So just for those interested, that's what the weight is. And then, of course, this is the keyboard. Let's take a listen to how it sounds. Pretty nice. Now, it does have that cal calculator or whatever you want to call it, the Asus numpad or whatever. What's, what's their um, 
fam- what are they famous for? What is this usually called? I forget. Anyway, so this is uh, this works double duty as far as different functionality. Again, if you want a numpad, it might be a solution there. Let's take the sticker off. Okay, so pretty nice. Now let's take a look here. Let's see how far back this goes. 180 degrees. Okay, it goes back 180 degrees. Pretty flat. That's pretty nice. This is also a touch screen in addition to having that high refresh rate, which is going to be pretty interesting. I mean, let's think about this. We're looking at 120 hertz OLED touch screen. I think it might even have pen support if I read that correctly earlier. And uh, all this for $800 and probably will go on sale for even less once it's been out for a while. So pretty interesting. So far, the build feels really good. Let's get a, a look at this build quality wise. Not too much flex, which is good. Uh, I don't see the raised typing angle. Do we get that like we used to? So I guess we don't get that ergo lift hinge like we used to. But I do like the fact that it does go back 180 degrees. The hinge is pretty good. Not too much screen wobble. So pretty good so far. Okay, so that is the unit so far. We're going to get it plugged in. Let me put in, and we'll get to your comments and questions. Um, so let's look at the ports. I forgot to tell you about the ports. So let's, uh, let's get that done. So let's go to this camera here. So on the left side, you have a USB-A port there. And then you got some venting there. And that's it on the left side. On the right side, you get uh, some indicator lights there. And you get two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. And you also get a, an HDMI 2.1. So that's going to be really good for those that want to have a bit ability to go beyond 4K 30. 2.1, I believe, can do uh, up to 60, and I think 2.1a can go up to 120, 4K 120. So correct me if I'm wrong. So pretty good in terms of some of the ports here. Again, for a thin and light laptop, that's not too bad. Uh, the build is really good. It's also got a military standard 810H rating. So that is looking good. All right, let's get to your comments and questions. We're going to plug it in. Is the camera Windows Hello compatible? I don't, I'm not sure if it is. I don't see a fingerprint scanner on here either. So we're going to figure all that out. Once we get it booted up, let me plug in to my Thunderbolt dock and that's going to have to go on this side. Okay, we're going to have to leave this a little bit over here because it's not long enough but that's plugged in let's turn it on so glossy display let's uh let's put it on this for now so first boot always we're going to be a little bit slower than normal let's see if it unless i have to put in the actual plug that means i'm going to have to find something other than a European plug. I'm not really sure what's going on here with that. Let me see if I can find some other Mickey Mouse uh, plug here. But uh, it may need the original to get booted up. So give me a second. Let me find one that will fit this because we might have an issue if not. Or let me try another plug and then let's see where we'll go. So let me put it on this for a moment and we'll be right back. Uh, let's put it here. I'll be right back. Okay, so I found one from an HP laptop. Let's see. Let's uh, take the plastic off of this. 
and let's see if this one will fit. Looks like it's a perfect fit. So let me plug it in. Give me a, give me a moment. Cause I don't think it's going to plug. I don't think it'll get started without that. So obviously, so give me a second. Too many wires. Okay, we got the plug, we got it plugged in here and it's lighting up, so that's a good sign. So what, kind of weird, huh? Kind of weird. So they sent me this and this was purchased at Best Buy. Maybe that's why they took it down, folks. Maybe this is the reason. Okay, I, I haven't even looked at the comment section. I can only imagine what's going on here. So it takes time, just wait. So yeah, thank you for being patient, folks. One man band today. All right, is the casing plastic or metal? So far, everything's cool to the touch, so everything's looking like it's all metal. It's also got, as I mentioned earlier, a military standard A10H rating. So this is booting up for the first time. Obviously, there's the Asus branding there, so uh, good to see that it is working. Again, good to th good thing I have other plugs here that I could could borrow the Mickey Mouse ears for to plug in. So they do have other models that will have a discrete GPU uh, along the ZenBook line, of course, with these OLED displays. They're all OLED in the line. So there you go. We'll check the camera. Don't worry about it. Good to see Montauk Whaler here. It's been a while. Good to see you, my friend. Okay, so this is booting up. Let's uh, let's plug in the HDMI while we're here. Um, let me see if this might do it better. You know, I don't like it when it's on the right side because everything is on my left side. So, so the HDMI is plugged in. Again, HDMI 2.1. A lot of work for all this. Only 29 likes. I guess you guys are not liking this. I don't know what's going on. 53 of you. Okay. All right. Let's get this set up. Okay. United States. Yes. Oh, let's take a look at the display here. So, supposed to be a touch screen. So, say yes. Touch screen is working. Skip that. Again, don't mind all these lights. It's a very glossy display. By the way, 120 hertz, as I mentioned. Let me put in my credentials here as far as the Wi-Fi. Keyboard feels good, by the way. Feeling pretty good. Let me see if I have a pen here that might be charged. Let me see if any of these pens work. I'll have to find a pen that supposedly does have pen support, although it is a clamshell. All right, let me go next. Okay, it's checking for updates. William says, maybe Asus goofed. They must have sent the USA models to Europe and, and vice versa. Yeah, maybe that's why uh, it's now showing uh, nothing on the Best Buy page. By the way, this is a Best Buy only SKU. I think what they're calling a blue label, right? So pretty interesting. You might have a point there, William. So I don't know. But you know what? It's happening all live, so I'll take it, right? I'll take it. All right, so seems there are very few choices with OLED screams, screens uh, and centered keyboard without a numpad with a dedicated GPU. Um, yeah, so they will have other models as far as the ZenBook line that do have discrete GPUs. There's also ones with AMD processors. So I, I'm, I'm in the process of getting some. So just stay tuned. There's more coming on this, on this Asus line here. 
Let, yeah, let's go, lazy people. Good to see you, one bad van. Is it glossier than the Book 3 Pro 360? It's pretty glossy. It's pretty glossy. You can see it there. Um, in fact, it's a little blown out. Again, pretty bright. You can see it there. Uh, touch screen. Let me accept all this nonsense here. And for those wondering, again, this is what the back of it looks like. It's already collecting fingerprints. Pretty sleek looking, I got to say. Pretty nice looking. Um, let's skip this for now. I'm not going to name the device. Okay. Uh, I don't want to really, I hate having to sign in with the Microsoft. I mean, I have a burner account. Sign in options. Let's see. Sign with security. Forgot my username. All right. Let me put in my credentials. It's a waste of time with this crap, but I'll just, whatever. It's my burner account. Okay. Good thing I had some other chargers here that I could borrow that plug from because again, if you're joining us late, they sent the European plug inside there. So I, I guess there's some mistake in the shipment maybe. Maybe that's why they took, took it off. Now here, take a look at this. It says touch screen here. It's a touch layer, little sticker here. So uh, let's remove that. So there's a sticker. So it does look like it has a face recognition. Let's get that set up. It is pretty glossy. So let's set that up now. We might as well. It's pretty interesting how they set all this stuff up. That's it. Okay, let me put in a pin. Isn't this fun, ladies and gentlemen? I always have fun with this stuff. <laughs> All right. So Okay. Big goof there. What's the Yeah, it could have been uh again, I don't know why maybe that's why it's not on Best Buy anymore. Huh. But I love that we're doing this live, folks, so we are able to experience this together. So as it's happening in real time. So let's go next. I don't want to do my, my name and all that crap. Let's skip that. The, the screen, by the way, is pretty gorgeous. We'll look at it once we're done. Uh, and again, I turned it down because it's going to be blown out on my other camera here. You can see this camera. If I go all the way, which is a good sign here. As far, oh, look at that. It's fully blown out. This is a bright, sharp display, folks. This thing is gorgeous. And I am still in shock that this is $7.99. So uh, pretty, pretty amazing to be able to offer that at this price. So there maybe are a couple of compromises. We'll talk about that in a moment, but it does have an IR camera. It is a full HD camera, by the way. Let's skip that. It is very, very nice looking. This screen is really nice. Again, I do have studio lights, as I mentioned, even with the Samsung, which was extremely good. It is a glossy display. Let's not, we're not going to sugarcoat it, but uh, it has to have this layer, I think, because of the uh, type of OLED display they're using here. It is, uh, I believe it does have pen support. Again, I haven't checked yet, but we will look into that, especially in the upcoming videos I'm going to do on this. Yeah, EU plug in the US box. So definitely a mistake. For those joining us late, what we're talking about, this plug, which is an EU plug right there, was in the box. So not, not good, but pretty interesting that, that they... I guess that's maybe why they took it off Best Buy. That's my guess. We'll see. All right. Now, I don't think the RAM is upgradable, but I think the SSD is. If we have some time, or for certain I'll do in the video of this, I will put it, I will open it up. HDR calibration tool along with the quality OLED panel Asus uses is great. So, yeah, I agree, Michael. Good to see you. Um, so let's, uh, let's go here. Okay. So let's see what else. Excited to see this is 
this is a more. I'm excited to see this and more Asus content. I feel like they do a great job. Price to performance ratio is off the charts, people. 800 bucks, OLED, 120 hertz. You can't go wrong, right? Touch layer, pen support, from what I understand. Again, I haven't tested that. This display is gorgeous. And if you want to take a look, let's turn this around. I want to show it to you. This is really, really gorgeous. You can see it here. Um, I know it's it's very, I got a lot of lights here and stuff, but this is a gorgeous display. I'm very, very impressed. And the build, by the way, has improved than from prior generations. They did a much better job here on the build quality. The the there's very there's a little screen wobble. You can see it here. Let's take a look. Not too bad. Pretty nice hinge, by the way. So I'm not really worried about that. Question from Eric. Uh, will this be hard to buy? Asus's website can be hard to navigate. Some hardware is unavailable to buy from there directly. Yeah, so I'm a little bit confused as to why this was taken off of the Best Buy website. My guess is, is because uh, they probably had a shipment meant for Europe, it seems, because why would it have a European plug in there? So let me unlink this account. There we go. Unlink. Okay, so that is a pretty interesting question. All right, so why don't we, uh, let's load in some of the benchmarks here. Uh, let me take it from my drive here. We have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. I'll use the second one here. So I've got them loaded on a micro SD card reader. And let's open the folder and let me bring in Cinebench R15 and this one, let's move it to the, oops. So let's move these to the downloads. Okay. And good to see Mr. Rainbow Loves Coffee all the way from Tel Aviv. Yeah, long time. Good to see you, my friend. Nice to see you. Okay. And uh, let's see. Let's see this move over. And then let me go to, uh, let's start confirm here. Let me get, uh, let's get Geekbench going. Again, we want to get Geekbench 6 here. Okay, these are loading in preloaded stuff. I forgot to take that off. Okay. All right, geekbench.com. Let's take a look at it from here. Let's download this. So I want to get a couple of benchmarks going. Say hello to a few people as well. Good to see PVSA Morgan. Good to see you again. ZenBook Pro 14 OLED 13th Gen seems to be good. That one has a discrete GPU and SD card slot. I hope you get your hands on one sometime soon. Yeah, I do expect to get it at some point. I was lucky to get this one because as soon as I bought it and I picked it up from Best Buy this morning, it is now gone from the Best Buy website. And I suspect, like I said, it's probably due to the fact that they put a European plug in the box with a 90 watt adapter. So uh, not pretty, not sure what the deal is, but we'll find out. We'll find out at some point. All right, so let's uh, open this Geekbench and let's get this uh, unpacked here. Let me move this out of the way. So let me also change, and by the way, you can cycle through the different thermal profiles. I forget which one it is on this one. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look at the keyboard, by the way. Let's see what the layout looks like. So we got a camera button here. That's good if you want to hide the camera. Mute the microphone. That's always good. Let's see. Where is the one? Is it a function cue? I know if we press this one, that brings up Asus's uh, own, my Asus uh, control panel. Let's see. Let's agree. And we can take a look together. I don't want to do that crap. So Geekbench, yes. I don't want to log in. We'll 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 change that later. Let's close that for now. Let me put it on power settings here. Right now it's on balance. Let's put it on best performance. So far I haven't heard the fans. So this is a Core i5 13500H. Believe that's 12 cores. Four performance cores, eight efficiency cores. So we'll see. And then 
as far as whether or not we can change the thermal i think there is a way to do it on the keyboard if anybody knows let me know is it a i know in the other brands it's like function q or something like that so let's uh, let's run the cpu test and let's see what we get yeah we could do the browser benchmark as well um You mean the speedometer test? Which test are you talking? Are you talking specifically speedometer 2.0? Or the browser benchmark? I should check that out. I was waiting for this one. Yeah, so we're all we're, we're doing it happening in real time, folks. Happening in real time. We got 44 likes. We got 66 of you watching. Okay. So while that's doing that, there is uh let me go to their website because I want to see how to switch between the different thermal profiles. The color is ink well gray for those that were wondering. So cooling design, blah, blah, blah. Hot mode switching. Okay, so it's function F. So function F. So function F. So that's the whisper mode. We don't want that. That's the performance mode. Okay, I figured it out. We'll run it again. Yeah, I'm going to do the speedometer 2.0. But let's get this benchmark going. Okay, and I went out of pocket. So the Asus Q539ZD is on sale from Best Buy, $400 off, $9.99 at Best Buy. Thanks, Michael, that's a good deal. That's a good deal, and thank you for the Function F. That is correct. Function F cycles between the different thermal profiles. We're on performance right now. So which version are you testing? So if you if you see what we're doing right now, it is the Asus ZenBook 14X OLED, the Q410 VA, which is a uh, one that is specifically for Best Buy, from what I understand, one of the, what they call the blue label specials, I guess. I don't know. But um, I guess the, it's designed or it's a SKU specific to only to Best Buy that I guess Asus and Best Buy collaborate on to make a specific skew but it's pretty much it's the 14x oled i left a link to the general page information over at asus's website so i'm gonna have to restart this because uh like last time sometimes the geekbench 6 let me just restart the computer geekbench 6 doesn't cooperate so we'll restart it It'll take a few seconds let's get that done so while we're doing that uh, let's again talk about the build quality so far pretty good um, it's not getting too hot to the touch it is it was just put into the performance mode but so far so good not too bad uh, let's see if anybody's watching over on twitter so it looks like there are two people watching good good to see you over at twitter for those watching over on youtube glad to have you it's the blue plate special mr rainbow loves coffee <laughs> okay so let's log in face recognition almost instantaneous good job on that front we'll look at the camera as well let's try it again let's try the geekbench 6 this happened last time folks uh with the dell xps 15 and by the way i did all my benchmarks on the core i9 i compared it to the uh 12th gen from last year the 9520 and i just found out tomorrow what's coming is the i7 version so we'll be able to see the difference between the core i7 and the core i9 both oled displays so pretty interesting so we'll get that that's coming very soon the next week couple of days really i should have that out early next week maybe even sooner good to see keyboard g here okay so let's run that geekbench 6 is running right now Let me put myself down there. Okay. Any ideas when we can buy the UX604 ZenBook Pro 14 OLED? Should be soon. Again, I'm getting some other stuff from, oh, from Asus. This was purchased with my own money, but I will be getting review units on the different throughout the different products within the ZenBook line. Regards from India. Good to see you, my friend. Sur Surpreet Singh. Good to see you. Hopefully this will come through this, this benchmark. So we'll see. Let me go back a little bit. 
It is not a two-in-one, but they do make two-in-one versions within the ZenBook line. So there are variations. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into that once we get some more units in. This is a clamshell, 180 degree display, OLED, 120 hertz. And by the way, I should make sure we should go to the display settings after this and make sure if it's not already on 120 hertz, I'd like to put it on there. Obviously, sometimes these brands out of the box, put it as a 60 just to save battery life because it does use more battery life going to 120. That's for sure. So let's see what other questions we have here. Yeah, regards from India. We already said that. Good to see you. All right, so let's uh, let's keep going. Okay, with 66 of you watching, and again, this happens in real time. So. You know, you're seeing all everything happen at all at once here. So the good, the bad, the ugly. So far, it's looking good. I'm very impressed for $800, $799.99. I bought this at Best Buy. The build quality is looking pretty good. So, I mean, I, I can't argue with the fact that you're getting a good port selection, a decent port selection. HDMI 2.1 two Thunderbolt 4 ports, USB-A port on that side. So pretty, pretty good. They got you covered there. Is the keyboard backlit? It is. You can see it here. Let me try to turn on the backlight. Yep, there it is. You can actually see it. So it's got brightness up right there. So it's got three settings. So low, medium, high, and that's at high. So pretty good, pretty good. Keyboard layout's pretty good as well. You got your page up and page down, arrow keys uh, to the right, although you will have to hit the function or the function lock to enable the home page up and page down, it seems, right? So some people may not like that. Um, you got the camera button or the camera shutter button. You got the microphone shutter there. So looks like we're having a problem with Geekbench 6. Once again, it's it's not the computer because it happened on the Dell. Let's move on to the next thing. Let's go to, and we'll get to that browser benchmark, the speedometer test in a moment, but let's, uh, let's do Cinebench R15 as we always do. And then we'll take a look at the camera. We'll run some other benchmarks. We'll test the SSD. It is 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. I believe it is upgradable. The RAM is soldered in. It's eight gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. So uh, that is what we have there. So uh, for 800 bucks, we're getting a premier premium display, 120 Hertz. OLED, I mean, where? what more can you ask for? Uh, other brands charge thousands and thousands of dollars, and here you're only getting charged $800, and you could probably even get it on sale at some point for even less. So I think the price-to-performance ratio is really, really good. Okay, let's do this. So the OpenGL test will test the integrated Iris XE graphics. It's a pretty quick test, so let's run that. and it's preparing i'm on the performance mode so we'll see how that's going to do yeah i i bring you a full review so no worries absolutely rs this is just an initial look i'm going to do everything in the upcoming full review i will update whatever firmware is available whatever drivers need to be updated windows has to be updated this is just a you know take whatever you see now with a grain of salt and i'll give you a good case in point uh the benchmarks that i ran live on the dell xps 15 actually got better numbers once i did did a firmware update once i did the driver updates the windows updates and so forth and everything seemed to be a little bit better and by the way just a little spoiler i got better battery life on the 13th gen over the 12th gen. Not a huge difference, but it is noticeable. So that was good. We'll we'll talk more about that in the full review as well. Hello from Singapore. We only have the 14X OLED UX3404, which is i9. Again, one thing with, with Asus, there are many different SKUs out there. Many different uh, within the brands, within the actual sub brand, you know, sub uh, SKUs and so forth. So pretty, pretty typical uh, number here, 93.55. And again, pretty typical for integrated Iris XE graphics. Now these are the, um, this is the, the, the CPU. And again, Core i5, 13, 500 H, 45 Watts, 12 cores, 
although maybe it's 16 cores. I don't remember now. So I don't think it's 16. It says it here, but I think the R15 doesn't correctly read that. Uh, 20,000, 2,083, not bad. So let me take a screenshot. Okay, that, let's save this. Let's go to the next one real quick. Let's just run through these. Let's do the Cinebench R20. And again, I'll try the um, Geekbench 6. Hopefully that'll work. Again, I've been having issues with Geekbench 6. I think it has to do with the application, not so much the laptop, because we had the same issue on a couple other brands, a couple other laptops as well. So... I was looking for a 3050 version, but I did not see it at Best Buy. No, I think this is this one in Best Buy, this particular one has the integrated Iris XE. XE is getting, yeah, you said it, getting a little bit long in the tooth. That is right, Slim Shadiest. That is getting a little bit long in the tooth. There is no doubt about it. I've said it many, many times here on this channel. Okay, so let's uh, open Cinebench R20. hard to do these live streams you think it's easy but it's not <laughs> all right so the cinebench r20 is running test the cpu 12 cores that's what i thought so this is correct so 12 cores 16 threads four performance eight efficient as far as the cores and it's ripping through it pretty good. So I expect to have a pretty decent score. Again, 45 watt CPU, not a P series, which would be 28 watts, and not a U series, which would be 15 watts. So pretty good. I like that they went with this. But of course, 70 watt hour battery, pretty nice size for a 14 inch laptop. Screen size, 14.5 inch diagonal display. Resolution, I don't know if I mentioned it, 2.8K, 2880 by 1800. So 2.8K OLED, 120 hertz. I hear the fans going right now. And I don't know if it's a single fan or dual fans, but we'll have to check it out once I open it up, either in this live stream if we have time or, of course, in the video as I always do. Pretty nice score, 4726. And again, Core i5 here, so pretty good. All right, let's uh, save that. Okay, and now let's uh, let's test the SSD. Then we'll do the browser benchmark, and then we'll do the camera. So let's go back up one level here. Let's go to the crystal disk mark test. And let's get that uh, reads on the speeds, the reads and writes, I should say, on the SSD. So... Again, only comes in 512, but I believe it will be user upgradable if you open it up. Hopefully, we'll get a look at that. All right, so that's running now. Let's get to your comments and questions. So far, I don't see any super chats, so that tells me that you're okay with me buying all this. Okay, so <laughs> that I'm, it's okay that I'm going broke very quickly. Um, I'm just kidding. Okay, XE is getting a bit long in the tooth. And I, again, like I said, I agree. So it looks like Gen 4 speeds, although a little bit on the low side on the read. And again, what I've seen based on past um, experience is that the 512 tend to be a little bit less than say if you get a terabyte or even above that. So, uh, but although the one I saw on that Dell XPS 15, the 9530, uh, had a I think reads over 7,000 and writes close to 6,000 or so. So it was very, very good. These are certainly fast. I mean, there's no question about it. Uh, nearly 4,000 on the read so far. So that's looking pretty good. I guess we could ask for a USA type power cord. But if I do return this at Best Buy, I have a very good reason. Uh, this is the reason, folks. <laughs> what the F? <laughs> what's going on here why was i given in best buy here in the united states a european plug this is kind of weird so i i don't know but uh good thing that i have about 500 laptops here that to choose from to get those uh to get that power cord to connect to the 90 watt power charger and again USB-C. so for those wondering so while this is loading in let's go to the next question So for a sub 1000, these speeds are great. 
for sub 1000, we got 800 bucks here, which is a steal. This is a steal. Uh, the display alone is worth over a thousand all in, right? So OLED, uh, touchscreen, pen support from what I understand, 120 Hertz, unheard of. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know. You're, you must have put some kind of emoji. Yes, I see the emoji. And then there's Mr. Rainbow Loves Coffee. European. What? European. It's <laughs> funny. Okay, so the flip would be, I believe, the convertible, right? The flip line within the Zen book line. So there you go. All right, so let's see what else. So as I said, Brian, earlier, I don't know if you came late, a Core i5 13500H Intel processor, it's 13th gen, 12 cores, eight performance, uh, four performance cores, I should say, and eight efficient cores. So for a total of 12, I believe it's 16 threads. So that's where we have it. 45 watts. So again, the reason writes are not, again, less than what we normally see, but again, certainly fast enough. Let's take a look here. So these are certainly fast enough for what you needed to do. Good news is, of course, it is Gen 4 compatible. So whatever sticks you want to use in it, as far as uh, expanding out the storage, you can. M.2, NVMe. Okay. And while we're doing that, let's see this uh, calculate or this numpad. There it is. So you press this button and you can crunch your numbers. I don't know, William, would that be, I don't think that's good enough, but I guess in a pinch, it will do better than nothing. And then what is this? What does this do? I don't even know what that does. I forgot, but that's if you want to use the numpad. Okay. So that takes care of that. Okay. So this is almost done. We'll then take a look at the camera. Then we'll do the speedometer 2.0 test. The 12700H on Michael's Flip 15 uh, got 57, uh, 5473 on Cinebench R20 by comparison. So that's a 12700. That's a Core i7. This is a Core i5. Okay. And again, I didn't do any updates. I didn't update the drivers. I didn't do any kind of firmware updates. And they tend to uh, obviously increase the performance. And I'm also connected via HDMI. That takes a little way from the performance numbers as well. That's a 20 key. The problem with, uh, thanks Carl. The problem with the Asus is the ordering the one you find on their website is a nightmare. They release a bunch of products, but never available to order. Any thermal issues? Nothing that I've noticed so far. I did hear the fan noise and it does it has not gotten very hot. It's a little warm on the bottom, but again, we haven't really pushed it all that much. Let me take a screenshot here. Okay, so we got the speeds on the SSD. Let's take a look at the camera. It's an IR camera. It's Windows Hello compatible. Say yes. Okay, so this is the webcam. It is 1080p. It looks pretty good. Looks pretty clear. Got to say that. So 1080p, yep, 30 frames per second. I got to tell you, it looks pretty good. So I don't know if they have any of the studio effects and all that stuff. I don't see any on this. And again, sub 1,000, 800 bucks, by the way. Uh, I'm not expecting all the bells and whistles, but for the price, you're getting a lot for the money, a lot of bang for the buck, that's for sure. I'm excited to see upcoming Framework 16, something new in laptops. I did speak to Framework. I, I, I think I mentioned it earlier at a, another live stream. I do expect to get some uh, review units from them, especially the AMD model when it is available. So we will be having Framework here on the channel, and I look forward to that. All right, so camera, what do you think? Looks pretty good to me. 1080p, gets the job done. Good quality webcam, I agree. Okay, good job. All right, so let me close that. All right, so camera looking good. 
1080p IR. I don't think there's a fingerprint scanner on this. By the way, it has Dolby Atmos speakers, well, and it's Harman Kardon as far as the tuning on it. Let's uh, let's uh, let's run the let's do the browser benchmark. So the speedometer 2.0. So this will test the browser of this. Obviously, this is a good test to see. It's a really quick one. According to, it's in the my Asus app, all the AI stuff. Okay, maybe we'll take a look at that. We've seen that a million times, but it's always good to see. Thank you, Slim Shadiest. So I will go to the My Asus. Probably will have to register, which is what I didn't want to do. Uh, according to William, the camera looks good. And by the way, I hope you're not anybody who's having some uh, reaction to this flashing cannot be good. That's a pretty good score, right? I think that's a decent score. So let's uh, let's take a screenshot of that. So 304 on the speedometer. I guess that's okay. Uh, I don't remember if that's on. I think that's on towards the higher end, I guess. So let me go back to this and my Asus app. I may have to register here. Let me let me do that real quick. Because I do want to see it. Okay, hold on. Two-factor authentication here. Okay, done. That wasn't so bad. All right, so successful. Now, let me go back here. Okay, let's go here. All right, let's start. And we got backup restore, system diagnosis. Oh, this is what I hate. See, this is the, the crapware that makes me upset. How do I get out of this? I don't want to redeem it. Oh man, I, I, I and I'm sure McAfee's on here somewhere. So let's see, home app here. So you can look at the battery care, fan profile, you could change that. We'll do that later. Uh, noise canceling on the microphone, sound modes. Right now it's sound it's set to music. We'll test all that in the video. OLED flicker. Okay, they want me to update this, and I, this is really annoying. So I'm going to take your word for it. I'm sure you can do all the studio effects once this is updated. Let's say, okay, it's, they're, they're going to annoy the F out of me until I update it. So you get the function key lock, automatic keyboard brightness, all that stuff. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. The design looks pretty good. Please, a glance on this comment to please. Huh? Well, I'm glancing on it. Is there anything in the slim form factor with a 4050 or dedicated GPU plus 13 gen? From what I remember, it was a 6404. Is there any other? I don't know. Those are really confusing as far as the different, different models. They have many different models and the naming is not easy to keep track of. So I'm sure they have something. There's plenty to choose from over at Asus. The question is, can you get it is, is, the, is the big question. It's good according to 225 is good on the U11s. So we got 300. That was pretty good on the speedometer test. All right, let's um, let's load in. I wanted to do something else. I forgot what it was. Uh, let's try Geekbench again because we're a glutton for punishment. Um, let's see if this will work this time. Then maybe we'll open it up. So let that run. Click on customization and all of the tricked out settings are in there. Okay. I will take a, we'll take a look at that. Slim Shadies. Thank you for letting me know. Good to have you here. That's for sure. That certainly helps me. Okay. So there are just so many different SKUs that it's hard to keep track. So it pulled up the calculator. So the calculator, I know when we, we press this button right here, that brings up the calculator or the numpad, whatever you want to call it. Oh, so is this, what is this button? Does everybody, anybody know what this is? Doesn't seem to do anything, so I don't know. What is this? I mean, what is this symbol here?
The fingerprint scanner should be on the power button if they have it. I don't believe this is going to be a, I didn't think it did, but we'll check to see. In fact, I shouldn't do this during this, but let's take a look at the settings. Let's go to account. And this, don't worry about that email. It's a burner account. Um, let's go to accounts here. And this is sign in options. So the sign in options, uh, fingerprint scanner. No, it's just the face recognition. So no fingerprint scanner on this one. Okay, the Geekbench 6 compatible with the 13th gen chips. Yeah, it should be, except that I am keep getting uh, errors on it. So we'll see. It did it again. So I, I don't know what's going on. Let me, uh, maybe this has to be open. Sometimes when you have the browser open, then we can do it. So let's rerun this. Let's try it again. Sometimes the browser not being open is the problem. That's what I've noticed, but it doesn't always seem to be the case. So the symbol is the any key, okay? So is that user programmable? Is that what you're saying? To control the numpad brightness. Ah, okay. So you're saying that if I put this on, so I put, so we press this, and then this controls the brightness. Yep, you're right. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. AR Tech Reviews. Good job. Good job. You could turn that off. Okay. So let's see if this will work. It's very frustrating to not be able to do the Geekbench 6. I should, by the way, William, have the Geekbench 5 handy, but I've pretty much moved over to Geekbench 6 at this point to be consistent, but uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll have to get Geekbench 5 or something. And I didn't preload it, so I don't know if I have one to use. We'd have to hunt, hunt around for one. Otherwise, I'll just put it in the video, so it's not a big deal. But we, what we can do is run the Cinebench R23. We'll do that next. So I'm glad to find out what that symbol was. That adjusts the brightness on the numpad when you do enable that. Hey, good to see Digital Slang. I saw you did a, a, a good, great review, actually, of that uh, mixer, that sound mixer with the microphone. I thought that was pretty interesting, a good starter for whoever wants to get into podcasting or into YouTube and so forth, the live streaming. That wasn't such a bad deal, I think. That looked pretty good. So good video on that. Go ahead on over to Digital Slang. So, uh, the symbol sum was... Oh, this is good. The symbol sum. Oh God, I can't even. It's so bad I can't even say it. This the symbol summons the ghost of John McAfee. I just hope he doesn't come out from his grave to come get us. But I'm sure it's lurking. He's lurking in there somewhere. Okay. Anyway, so this is running. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Digital, digital slang. All right. Okay. It, it's the brightness. Yes, I saw that, Luis. Thank you. It is to change the brightness when you do enable the touchpad or the touch layer, the touchpad calculator, what, the numpad, the numpad function. All right. I am hoping this will work. So having opened the, maybe the, the Edge browser, nah, it didn't work. I don't think it worked. Sometimes restarting it works. Let's see if it could run this. The, the, let's try the GPU test just to see, you know, let's see if that works and then we'll figure it out from there. But really frustrating that this is this, this is happening quite a bit on Geekbench 6. It's nothing to do with the laptop because the same thing happened on the Dell XPS 15. How long will the battery last with the H series uh, CPU? That's a good question. It's a more powerful. Uh, uh, it's a more powerful CPU. Here, thanks, Raphael. This is a link to Digital Slang's uh, channel. If you haven't checked him out, very chill guy. Does great live streams, great audio products. He looks at live streaming, microphones, all that great stuff. Uh, you should check it out. Is the 14.5 inch screen on the Asus the same as the XPS 15 screen? It's different. Um, first of all, it's a different size, number one. 
Number two, this is brighter. This is a 550 nit, whereas the one on the XPS 15 is 400 nit. So this is this is actually a lot brighter. And I'm noticing the colors are looking good. And by the way, we need to look at the settings because I don't know if this is in, um, let's take a look, if this is in 120 hertz. Let's go to the display settings, even though that's running. Let's go to advanced display settings. Oh, we got a score, but again, this is only for the, Iris XE graphics. Now that we did that, let's let's well we can let's try this again. CPU is, seems to be the problem. Okay, so let's go to the settings here. 2880 by 1800. And if we go down to the advanced display settings, 120 hertz out of the box. But you can drop it down to 60 for better battery life. And by the way, if I remove, this is also an HDR display, but you're not seeing that because I'm connected to HDMI. Once I remove the HDMI, the HDR option will be enabled. So uh, having HDR, having 120 Hertz, having OLED for $799, uh, tell me, is that not a steal or what? That is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Okay. So that's running that. And I'm going to have to load in the, I want to do the, let's do the Cinebench R23. That's about, it'll take about 10 minutes for at least one of the tests on there. We'll get it, see how much um, throttling, if any, is detected. I do imagine it'll maybe a little bit. We'll see. All right. So the Slim Shadius is getting eight hours out of his ZenBook Flip 14 OLED, running the display in dynamic mode, where it will determine if it needs to be run at 60 or 120. So I didn't see, uh, actually, Slim Shadius, that's an interesting. I didn't see an option for dynamic like we saw on the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro. Alt 360 and the ultra and all that i didn't see that option so is there in yours there is a dynamic switch or is there is there a switch on this one maybe there is i just have to find it so pretty interesting and alfredo is saying i hope they have amd versions of these they will by the way i saw they did uh better that has even better battery life and, and that's been traditionally what we've been seeing out of the ryzen processors better battery life so i expect that i can't believe we've been live streaming over an hour already can you believe this things are just popping up on this thing you know out of, out of everywhere so we'll see Hopefully we'll get a reading here. And again, I haven't updated anything. I'm connected to the HDMI port here. So I, things are just happening. Uh, hopefully this will give us a result finally. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. And we move on. I do hear the fans. In fact, let's get a measurement so we can hear. So 30, 31 at most, not bad at all. And I hear the fans are going, but again, we haven't really pushed it to the max. So 30, 31 decibels, this is not working. We'll have to restart it, get some updates, and then go from there. Let's uh, let's uh, bring in Cinebench R23. This will take a little bit more time, but we'll take some of your questions. So hopefully you'll have some comments that I can kill the dead air with so they don't call me dead air Andrew. And I hope John McAfee is not cursing us. Maybe that's why this the Geek Bench won't run, because the, the curse of John McAfee has reared its ugly head. So we'll see. That's what happens when you make a deal with the devil, where you're putting this crapware on your system, because they're getting money for each one that they sell. They're getting, I guess, a commission, I guess. And so that's one way to you know perpetuate this curse of the curse of john mcafee all right so let's go to cinebench and let's go here see once that loads in i appreciate that Raphael. okay let's accept that all right let's do the multi-core 
Let's do the multi-core, and then we'll see where we get from there. All right, so while that's doing that, according to One Bad Van, a friend of his has the Vivo Book 15S OLED with the 12500H, and it flies a long, quick machine with a 600-nit OLED panel. They're saying 550 on this, uh, but it seems pretty bright. So far, pretty, pretty bright. In fact, I blow out this camera when we go all the way up on it. So, But right now, it's looking pretty good. And again, for those that want to see it, it's 180 degrees right there. Pretty bright. This is all the way down. Pretty dark, right? And then this is all the way up. I always remove it as well, Raphael. So hopefully we're going to get some decent numbers here, both single and multi-core. I like the keyboard. It's really comfortable. I like the tactility. I think it's pretty comfortable to type on so far. Really nice backlighting on this. Pretty strong, easy to see. Very, very nice. So if you, you're on a dim, you know, an airplane where the lights are off, uh, you'll be able to get some work done. Pretty nice. And I feel like the spacing's good between them, between the keys is pretty good. So camera was really good so far. I like that. So very, very impressive for 800 bucks. I mean, how can you go wrong? Uh, really, really exciting to see this. Uh, I'm very happy. I, I got lucky. Again, for those joining us late, for whatever reason, Best Buy is selling one with a European plug. This has got to be a first. I've never seen anything like this. And maybe that's why it's not available right now. So pretty interesting. See it right there. So I don't know what to say. All right. And really good build quality. You can see it here. But though I am collecting fingerprints here. So something to be aware of. Okay. So it has a core i5 13500H. That's right. 12 cores. Correct. One bad van. Question from Raphael. What is the screen brightness rated as? So they're saying on the website 550, but eyeballing it, it seems closer to 600 to me. I mean, it's one of the brightest OLED displays I've seen uh, out there. So it's pretty good. Pretty bright. So very sharp colors. It's also an HDR display, but I can't show you HDR with it plugged in to the, won't give you that enable, it won't enable that function with this uh, HDMI in there. So any, I mean, if we can get, look, if we can get eight hours out of this, considering the fact that it has 120 Hertz, considering the fact that it has an OLED display that gets extremely bright. I would be, I would be, I, I take eight hours. Believe me, I take eight hours. That would be pretty good. So uh, once again, <laughs> that the, the, my Asus app allows you to do the dynamic refresh rate. Thank you so much, Slim Shady. So dynamic refresh rate for those that probably don't know what that is it'll switch automatically between 60 and 120 depending on what you're doing you can save a little bit of battery life or you can just put it into 60 hertz that will give you the most battery life and then of course 120 which will give you that smooth very fluid experience although it will use up more power so yeah if i can get eight hours out of this i i would be this this would be a one of the run in the running for laptop of the year if we can get eight hours question is it's going up now it's going really loud right now in fact let's get another measurement we're gonna take another measurement it was only like 30 before but we're running it even harder now so let's see So definitely noticeable, 47, 48 decibels. So much more noticeable now that we're running it full throttle here. 
So just something to be aware of. Not uncommon on a Windows laptop, that's for sure, running a 13th gen Intel processor. Okay. All right. All right, so while well, that's running, I don't know if we're going to do both the single and multi-core. I think only the I think the only turnoff is the graphics card. So uh, there will be other SKUs within this line, very similar, but with a I believe an RTX four thousand series or whatever it is. Uh, but we're not seeing that yet. So we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, this is Iris Xe. But again. 800 bucks let's keep that let's keep our let's keep our expectations in check here because where can you get for 800 dollars an oled display i i'm it's not like a broken record oled display 120 hertz touch screen 810h 810h military rating fast ram fast ssd i mean it pretty much checks all the boxes here right am i missing something because how can they get it this low? Now, it only has eight gigabytes of RAM, un, not upgradable, but it is DDR5, 512 gigs of SSD storage, but I believe you can upgrade that yourself. It is a dedicated GPU, um, I mean, integrated digital slang, Iris Xe, so nothing special for the graphics. So it's just the, it's just the integrated solution, which is getting a little bit long in the tooth. Yep, something called Pro 14 6404 13th Gen 4050 inside. So there are many different SKUs for different variations. So just, you know, be patient. We're going to get some more review units in. This I purchased with my own money. So I went out of pocket. So that's all I can say. It's not cheap to run this channel. That's all I can say. Did we run an SSD speed? Yes, we did. It is Gen 4, although it certainly supports Gen 4. We know that. The motherboard does. But um, but uh, we got decent scores. It's certainly not the fastest we've seen. But what I've seen is when you go for the 512, uh, normally those aren't the fastest as far as Gen 4 is concerned. The ghost of John is subsidizing the price. Apparently, it doesn't want you to run Geekbench uh, 6 as far as that test is concerned. But otherwise, it's looking good so far. And again, nothing to do with this laptop because I had the same issue on a couple other laptops as well. Now, according to Alfredo, this being a steal is great. It is worth saying that the last year's model, not as great, but good, will likely be on Best Buy on sale regularly for around $549. Absolutely. So I did one last year, got over 100,000 views. It was the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED. Just do a search on my channel. That one, I, I've seen it as cheap, I think it's $499 on sale. Yeah, Gen 4, absolutely a bonus. $800. Bucks. This is unheard of, folks. Unheard of to get this kind of price and performance. That ratio, it's just really, you don't see that every day. So I do tip my hat that they're able to do that. Now, the question is getting a hold of this because, like I said, for whatever reason, they put a European plug in, my, in the box. So I'm not sure what's going on. I should take Best Buy to task on this. Uh, maybe I'll stop by tomorrow. Maybe I should live stream it as I'm bringing it to them. Say, hey, you sold me a laptop with a European plug. It would be great if I'm traveling to Europe, but what about the fact that I live here in the U.S.? So nothing against Europe, of course. I love it there, but I live here in the U.S. Very strange. I'm sure there was a mistake in the uh, in their in their their products that they received. Obviously, this was meant for Europe. Was it meant for the U.S.? Good to see Steve. Is that a glass trackpad? It looks like it is. Yeah, I think it is. And it also has the numpad. And we learned today that this little symbol here changes the brightness. This is lower and this is brighter. I should do it, right, uh, Rafael? I don't know if Best Buy, who is, by the way, I should, as a disclaimer, Best Buy is a sponsor of the channel. I do some work with them. In fact, uh, I'm in the middle of doing something with them, so maybe maybe it's not such a good idea. Uh, maybe we'll hold off on 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 uh, on any kind of live vlogging. 
maybe it might be a good idea. Who knows? But uh, pretty interesting stuff. So the I do I do some sponsored stuff with them. So that is uh, that would be pretty interesting. That's for sure. All right. So let's see. We have we're we're just at it, almost there with this test. And again, we haven't updated any of the drivers as a disclaimer, you know, we're probably not going to get the the peak score that we would normally see. So just bear with me on that. And by the way, if you, you're not subscribed, again, I'd like to get to, let me, let me see where I am. I'd like to get to 140,000, even during this live stream would be great right now. It's gone down. I lost subscribers. So 51, I need 51. I lost five. <laughs> it's not looking good. Um, thanks. Uh, I hope I get your name right. Abdesame El Kadul. Keep it, Andrew. The channel grows a ton. I hope the algorithm gods treat me well. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. I appreciate that. According to William, maybe McAfee had some influence in giving you the European power cord. Yeah, it's been strange, very strange. And we got a good score here. 12,299. Let me take a screenshot. So it's a good multi-core score. So again, Core i5, it's, it is H-series. And by the way, the fans just went right off. So interesting. Yeah, I, I'm losing subscribers doing this. But you know what? It's okay. Hey, we gained one. So right now I'm at 139,950. All I need is another 50. I'll get it probably by tomorrow. Another 50 to make it a nice round number of 140,000. Can you believe this? Where we've come throughout the years. And now here, here we here we, we should probably have some violin music here. Um, how, can you believe that where we've come from? I mean, you know, when I, I remember when I had 30 subscribers, you know, five years ago, whatever it was. Uh, amazing amazing um yes john mcafee is a subscriber from hell and he sends his regards you hear that john hold on you hear that john yep okay <laughs> oh i'd love that uh digital we have to do a stream together i just got to figure out the setup here how to bring someone in i'm using Ecam live, but I I also use um, but I haven't used in a long time. What is it, Streamyard? Maybe we could do something. Uh, it's the EU, EU trying to force charging standards, but this time uh, with their wall plug. Yes, yes, very very true, Michael. <laughs> very true. Okay, so I'm not going to run the single core on the stream, but I will run it obviously for the video. Now, the last thing I want to do, I don't know if I should try to open this up. Let me see. So it looks like it's got T5 torque screws. Am I in the mood to do this? Ah, what the hell, let's do it. So let me unplug all this and let me turn this off. And then let me get, let me go get my iFixit kit. And by the way, let's wipe this down just to see okay let me shut this down okay yeah i'd love to do a, a live stream with you uh digital okay so let's sign it what do i want to do here the screen is gorgeous folks all right let me shut it down let me go get my kit be right back Okay. So it does collect a lot of fingerprints. Okay. So it looks like the T5. Let's try this one. I hope there's nothing underneath this strip because I'll be pissed off if there is. So 
So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know if there's anything else. Nine total, I guess. If I counted correctly. Hopefully this will be easy. Talk amongst yourselves. So these are out and then I can do the front ones now. Okay, let's uh, all right, let's put this to the side and let's see if we can get this started. So far looks like pretty good. That was easy. Then <laughs> this one. You don't know, sometimes the stress on having to open this stuff up. Okay, so here it is. So it is a single fan. Okay, let's put this over here. And there you go. So 70 watt hour battery, single fan for cooling. Looks like the SSD is user upgradable right there. Wi-Fi card is slotted in, nice. So the only thing you can't do is upgrade the RAM on this. So, but everything else is pretty good. So Wi-Fi card is upgradable. The SSD is upgradable. There are the speakers, nice size. Again, they're Dolby Atmos, Harman Kardon. So we'll test the sound in the video as I always do. And then of course, 80 watt hour battery. So pretty good. Let me get a, um, let me zoom in. Let me, let me switch to this camera. So I can use it for the video. Okay, done. So that's it. So yeah, soldered RAM, not, not uncommon, of course. Let me put this back on. Very easy to take the, the bottom cover off. So not a struggle at all. Good job, Asus. Make sure everything snaps back in before you put the screws back in. Got it. Almost had it. There we go. Okay, and let me get this put on. So pretty good in terms, the only negative of course, again, soldered RAM, not uncommon here in 2023. Most brands are doing that. Where did we just see? We just see, oh yeah, we just had the Dell XPS 15 uh, regarding the upgradable RAM, two SODOM slots, and then two uh, SSD slots, M.2 slots. So why is this taking me so long to get that? There we go. Okay, one in. Yes, it is Wi-Fi 6E, by the way. Uh, I know Jerry was, somebody, Raphael was asking. Wi-Fi 6E, I think is Bluetooth 5.2, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe it's even 5.3, I don't know but it is Wi-Fi 6E. And El Jefe does that. What did El Jefe do? Oh, we got a, a super sticker from the Slim Shadiest who's been so helpful tonight. I wanna give it up for the Slim Shadiest. Let me, I'll get to that super sticker in a moment. I will acknowledge it. Uh, let me just get these screws back in. It's easy taking them off, that's for sure. Let's hear it, let's, let's get this onto the broadcast here. Five dollars, the first super sticker of the evening. Nice. Okay. And he's also given us some great tips along the way. Uh, the My Asus app will have a lot of the functionality, a lot of the customization 
regarding whether or not you want to get it into the dynamic refresh rate. Uh, you can do that, or whether you want to uh, maybe get those those studio effects and the camera. Maybe we'll look at that when we're done here. Just want to get this back on. And all that stuff, all that jazz. So almost there. So I will have a video out on this probably the next day or so. And I will do all my testing, of course. We'll have the battery life and the full review. It does, this This is the ink well gray, is what they're calling it. It does collect a lot of fingerprints. Yeah, captive screws, Michael, would be amazing. A lot of the business-focused laptops that we look at here on this channel uh, use captive screws. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to move this over a little bit. So, it, oops, I want to scratch it in case I have to send this European <laughs> unit back to Best Buy. Okay, we're done. Nice. Put that to the side. And very, very good. I can try to put Linux on it. I know, Steve, I've been talking about that forever. Uh, maybe this will be the one we do it on. Yeah, I will do, we got to do something, digital slang. That's for sure. Yeah, Raphael, that would be great. Captive screws would be amazing, as I said. Hopefully it comes to Best Buy Canada and you don't get a European plug. Thank God. And good, good thing I have 250 laptops just lying around because I was able to borrow the power cord from one of those. So oh, pretty interesting. I'm sure it will be at least a thousand for us Canadians. Well, you know, you know, you always get those shaft a little bit. <laughs> you always get the shaft. Yeah, we can do a live stream from Vegas next year too. That would be great. I'm set up for it, man. So just come, come on over. We'll have a barbecue. Well, it's a little cold out, but you know, I'll even have strip. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, yes, we will definitely get together. And don't tell my wife what I just said. <laughs> yeah we're in vegas man so you know there you go what is this hold on let me see this email here oh by the way i wanted to mention this uh best buy has the yoga 9i i know some of you wanted a better price. Best Buy has it at $13.99.99. I meant to say that. So I reviewed the Lenovo Yoga 9i. So Best Buy has it right now, $13.99. So just go over to my website if you want to use my link. Of course, it is it is a um, an affiliate link, so that would be great. Montauk Whaler was laughing at that. All right. Anything can happen in Vegas, right? <laughs> no comment. Just ask digital slang. No comment. Anyway, um, let's see. Let's get to any more. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. So, that, right. So, El Jefe clips his live streams. I, I, I saw that into video reviews. So, every stream he will get a review from it. So, what I do, something very similar, actually. What I'll do, I will take this... Uh, Take the footage from this, the live unboxing portion. I will put that in my review as well. So a lot of what you see here will be edited and I repurpose it. So something similar uh, to what El Jefe does, right? Not quite exactly the same. Yes, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I live here in Sin City. There's no question about that. Uh, but, you know, most people think, you know, in Vegas, oh, we must be gambling all the time and living this crazy lifestyle. It's like living anywhere else. Once you're out of the strip, ask me how many times I go to the strip. Very few, very few times. But uh, once you're out, you're living, in, you're living in a normal neighborhood with schools and whatever and people parks and everything and people acting normal. So, yeah, 
You know, it's like anywhere else, except we have great weather nine months out of the year. Hey, Andrew, do you think AMD has something big around the corner? Well, I hope so. Uh, I don't know if you anybody read the news. Uh, PC sales were really down this year, the last quarter. I think down about 33%. Um, and Apple, in particular, took a big hit of a 40% drop. So that's not looking good. Uh, overall, all the major PC manufacturers, be anywhere from Dell, HP, Lenovo, have taken a hit so far in the first quarter. Why is this not available in the Asus portal? Because they gave all the European plugs to Best Buy, I guess. I don't know. You know, it's always the case with Asus, right? We don't know when it's available, who has it, when they have it, when you, where you can buy it. Yeah, so PC sales are down. So uh, they do, I, I do, my prediction is we're going to start to see a rebound 24-25. So in 2024, 2025, a regeneration. I think we're bound a new cycle of things. People want to upgrade. This is going to be a down year, folks, just so you know. It's going to be a little bit of a down year. No, to be a, I don't mean to be a downer, but just bear with, bear with me. It's harder to get the products. I went out of pocket for this. So uh, I, I actually took one for the team. I got my European Asus ZenBook here. Uh, with the European plug, and that's it. All right. AMD Zen 4 laptop should be showing up soon, hopefully. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Michael's noticed, he's got a question. I've noticed that the keyboard on my Asus was a little soft and spongy at first, but improved over time. Have you noticed that with any laptops before? I've never heard of that. Usually, it's the opposite, right? Maybe it would get a little bit... Um, spongier i guess more worn out but uh i gotta say this so far the keyboard's looking really good so far i'm liking this uh 180 degree hinge pretty sturdy love the display i'll give you all the measurements and every everything of course in the upcoming review uh, yeah, we've been hearing that uh, one bad van. MacBook Air 15 coming later this year. I know a lot of people would really like that. 15-inch MacBook Air. What do you think, people? Would you want one? If it comes out, I'll, I'll get one to review. Obviously, I'll have to buy that. But Max, as you know, don't do great on my channel. On the high end, AMD is a big jump. Yeah, I agree. It really, they've killed it. Problem is they can't scale up production. That's the problem. That's why it's hard to get these units with AMD Ryzen chips in it. Uh, they're not as readily available because, I, like Intel, Intel is able to fabricate the chips a lot easier than AMD. AMD just cannot scale to that level. Uh, what's the price for this version? $799 over at Best Buy. So link was is in the description below, but it's not working. My hunch is that it's because they have the wrong batch that was meant for europe came to best buy and i saw and interestingly enough somebody else put in a review one other person i guess they had a few units and i bought mine this morning but i read the review somebody made a comment on the best buy website saying that theirs also had the european plug and I was just curious about that. I said, wow, that's kind of weird. And here we are, live unboxing, in real time, we get the same same issue. So it seems like that batch was really meant for Europe. Okay, I want to get this, I want to get to 140,000. We're stuck at 139,950. Nobody wants to subscribe. Okay, no problem. No problem. All right. I'm down for a Mac, bigger MacBook Air. That would be pretty interesting. Although that midnight color is a... Um, major fingerprint magnet as is this so far although when it's clean it looks pretty it looks pretty good arm suing qualcomm their biggest customer is not a great look yeah i'd love to see that come in oh i also have something pretty interesting folks for those surface pro 9 people so i have something called um some from a company called robo and kala why they had, that's the name, I don't know. But I've seen other people look at it. I think it was a Kickstarter. It's a Surface 2-in-1 type device with an OLED display, high-res display. It's got a Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 as a processor, so it's on par with something like the Surface Pro 9 with 5G. I have that coming. I spoke with them. They're sending me one. And in every way, it seems like it's going to be 
as good as a Surface Pro 9, maybe even better in some respects. Uh, having an OLED display is pretty amazing. I have not seen that on a two-in-one detachable uh, in a Surface-like device in a long time, if at all. So uh, pretty interesting. So it's called Robo and Robo and Kala. What a weird name, but a really nice, looks like a pretty nicely made device as well. I'll have something on that very soon and I'll do a comparison. So stay tuned. Can you check the USB ports? Are they buttery tight? Um, so far, they've seemed okay to me. They've seemed okay. So if I plug this in, let me see. This will be on this side. So, yeah, it's okay. Not the tightest I've ever seen. Yeah, it could be a little bit tighter. Eh, the HDMI was pretty tight when I had that in earlier. So just so you know, it was okay. Little screen wobble, not bad actually. No more ergo lift hinge. Notice that they went with 180 degree hinge instead. I prefer this actually, because the typing is going to be fine on this. They used to give you a little bit, ra little, little raised typing angle, maybe 15 degrees or so. Uh, now it's just, uh, you're able to do that. Of course, they will make convertible versions in the flip line. So that's coming and all that jazz. So you know how that goes. All right. So... So according to Michael, I think uh, the MacBook Air only supports one external display. Without some workarounds, a larger display would be nice. Yeah, that would certainly make up for that. I personally, if you're going to go for the MacBook Air, I would go for the MacBook Pro 14. That's just me, but that's my workflow. I need something that can handle a sustained workload. I'm a big fan of that MacBook Pro 14. I'm using the M1 Pro. I bought it on sale, as I mentioned, and I've been using it ever since. Uh, they should have put one of the USB-C ports on the left. I was about to say that, uh, William, and I knew you were going to pick up on that. So what we have on the left, and you can see it here, is on the left is the USB-A port, and then there's some venting here, and then on the right is over here, two Thunderbolt 4 ports. So would have been nice to split these up. I, I agree. It's trying to bother me now. Let's see. Okay, so let me uh, see where we are. We're now at an hour. Probably going to wrap it up right about the oh, hour 39. This is a long one tonight. Hopefully Apple, Apple drops the dynamic island. It's kind of ridiculous. That I just I hate notches, so that's just me. I don't want to see anything like an island, notch, pill, whatever. I don't need it. Don't I don't care for it. All right, so let's uh, let's wrap it up here, folks. One more question here, one more comment. I like that Asus has gone with the side venting so it's easier to put your lap, it, put it on your lap without smothering the fans. Also, fans not blowing against the screen, uh, especially in tablet mode in their two-in-ones. Why, what's going on? You're Raphael really promoting digital slang. What are you doing, Raphael? What are you, a trader? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody head on over to Digital Slang. We, we're going to do some collaboration. We'll do a, we'll do a live stream together. We'll, 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 we'll do something. All right. So let's, uh, let's uh, wrap this all up. Let's cue the music. I want to thank the moderators once again for doing such a great job uh, for everybody showing up tonight once again for a live unboxing. I will edit this down and I will repurpose it much like uh, El Jefe does. I will get it out and I will uh, get you a full review. We're gonna do all the testing. I have the Dell XPS 15, the i7 coming tomorrow, so we'll be able to get a comparison between the i5 and the i, the i7 and the i9 in that line as well, and plus some other stuff. So a lot of stuff coming, people. I will see you in the next live stream and in the next video. Until the next time, next time take care, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>